Hi guys, welcome to Antique Sprinklers. Today, we're gonna to talk about L.R. Nelson Corporation and we're gonna make dinner. So L.R. Nelson Corporation got its start when Lewin R. Nelson uh, invented and patented a uh, repair coupling for garden hoses. Uh, basically, the way it would work is you'd cut the bad spot out of a hose and you'd insert the coupling on each side and then it had these mental, metal clinches that you could bend down and and cinch down onto the hose creating a, a seal and it was wildly successful and led to Nelson creating a bunch of products for the hose end market whether it was garden hose spray nozzles or um, you know uh, sprinklers on on bases that would uh, screw onto a garden hose and eventually within the first couple of decades they had a full line of, that's a heck of a lot of salt, they had a whole line of um, underground irrigation equipment. In fact, when I was doing my research about L.R. Nelson, I should mention also that they were uh, uh, headquartered and had their manufacturing facility, at least for the first uh, several decades, uh, in Peoria, Illinois. Um, but one of the things that I came across was a battle they found themselves in with Buckner and the city of Tucson, Arizona in the early 1930s. They'd uh, competed for the irrigation equipment on a municipal golf course there. And uh, the Buckner bid wasn't quite twice as high as the Nelson bid, but pretty close. It might have been, you know, 60% more or something like that. And uh, the city threw the Nelson bid out, um, just believing it to be irresponsible. Nelson claimed that they would stand behind the product for a number of years and brought in engineering firms to testify that the uh, equipment, equipment worked essentially the same as the Buckner equipment and was just as good in terms of the distribution of water, etc. But uh, ultimately, I believe Buckner won the day there. Uh, but it really is interesting to, uh, to watch this battle play out in a, a big city newspaper as front page news you know, week after week after week in the 1930s. So they continued uh, in operation and eventually, like everybody else at the time, you know, with World War II coming along, they joined the war effort and stopped manufacturing sprinklers then for a brief period and, uh, and made munitions for, uh, for the Army. Um, it's a little difficult, given the relative sizes of those um, companies to know what they did during the war. Fortunately, there's a historical society in Peoria, Illinois. It's done a good job of documenting the Nelson history, so we know what they did. Uh, I've been able to find out what Buckner did. Um, they joined a consortium of other companies in Central California to take on portions of War Department, uh, and in particular, um, naval contracts. And what Buckner did was they made brass fittings for you know, use both on shore and, uh, you know, on, on boats for, uh, for the Navy. As you can imagine, they were pretty good at that kind of thing. And uh, I've long wanted to do a video that kind of combined two passions, the history of World War II and the irrigation industry, but it's just, it's really tough. And some of those companies were so small relative to say like, you know, Ford or General Motors or, you know, Kaiser or a company like that that they're just, uh, it, it's a challenge to find the information. If you do happen to know what, say, Thompson or Skinner or any of those companies was up to during, uh, during those years in the first half of the 1940s, um, leave a comment. I'd love to talk to you. So, after the war, Russ Nelson is now the, uh, the head of L.R. Nelson Corporation. And something that I think is really fascinating happened. They entered into a sales agreement with Rainbird. And uh, that agreement lasted for decades. And the name of the company that they founded to uh, sell the joint product line was called Rainy Sprinkler Sales. And uh, they, they were selling things under that name from, uh, it's just the two of us here, so sorry about wasting most of a tomato. S they were selling stuff under that name from 
um, I think the 1940s, uh, at least into the early 1970s. And basically the way it worked was if uh, you wanted to buy something from Rainbird east of the Mississippi, basically the Midwest and the, uh, and the, uh, the East Coast, you uh, were actually purchasing it from this firm called Rainy Sprinkler Systems that were sales that had its headquarters in Peoria, which also happens to be where L.R. Nelson was. All of you people who know how to cook are probably throwing a brick through your TV right now. But uh, you know what? I do the best I can. So the Nelson line had really great quick couplers. They had, um, they had uh, Acme threads. And uh, I'll show you an example. As a matter of fact, hang on, I'll go grab one. Don't worry, I'm going to wash my hands uh, before I resume making dinner. But basically, here, let me get that out of the way so nobody complains. So uh, basically, the Acme threads are this really thick thread, and that gave you a really nice, smooth operation of the quick coupling valve. And so they, used, they sold Nelson uh, quick coupling valves and quick coupling keys with uh, those world-class Rainbird impacts on it. And here's like a, a fairly early example of a 20 on a uh, Nelson 40K. Um, you can tell by the style of the diffuser pin there. You can tell by the lever, um, by the shape of the, the body um, that this guy is kind of old. Um, but it was a, a perfect example of how that, um, how that product line was combined. And uh, they used Nelson spray heads. Nelson made a, uh, a small, um, rotor in that 30 to 40 foot range back then. I have one of those. I'll see if I can toss a picture in and I'll, I'll get some pictures also from various uh, products that, that they sold collectively. They had the Nelson rain train uh, in it, but they'd put like a, a number 70 on top of the rain train. So it was a real nice um, sort of synchronicity of those two product lines coming together. And again, it lasted probably three, possibly even part of four decades um, in business. And, uh, you know, you, you, you do find um, certain sprinklers for sale today on like eBay. You know, they have the, uh, the trustworthy base that'll have a 20 or 25 on top of it. And that was, you know, something that was, uh, you know, a, a product of, of that, you um, collaboration between the two companies. Okay, so uh, through the uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, Nelson is selling a lot of equipment, uh, you know, themselves, but uh, also through um, rainy sprinkler sales. And uh, the end of the 70s comes along and they purchase Moody uh, Irrigation Company, the company that was started by Georgie e. Moody back in uh, the late 19 teens, I think, possibly the uh, the 19. Let's get a little heat going under that guy. Under the uh, in the 20s, Moody had uh, innovated autom automatic irrigation. He'd made a an irrigation um, controller and valves that it would operate off of. So he was one of the first folks to ever do that. I think I need a bigger pan. What do you think? So um, and what Moody did for uh, for Nelson was. Uh, gave it access to very large pop-up impact rotors, um, golf-style controls where you had sort of a, a central control that would then um, manage other controllers out in the field, and they were electromechanical. And, um, you know, here in the Mid-Atlantic, there was a guy, I think in the 50s and 60s, maybe, maybe even, gosh, he, he might have still been around, I think, to a certain degree, even as I was getting my start in the late 80s and early 90s in golf irrigation. And uh, he installed wall-to-wall -wall, um, Moody uh, e equipment on these courses, and uh, especially in the 60s and 70s. And, and the way he'd do it, the central control was actually a wall in the, uh, the maintenance barn that just had these clocks side by side covering the whole thing. It's almost like when you watch a, a James Bond movie from the early 1960s and they show, I don't know, some government office and uh, they've got all these television <laughs> screens in the wall. And you know, there's like this long cathode ray tube behind them, you know, sticking behind the wall. That wall has like, 
you know, probably two or three feet of dead space back there, and I don't know where all the heat goes. But um, but anyway, so you'd have the this uh, tons and tons of wires, you know, exiting the the, the maintenance uh, barn and headed out onto the course, and then the Moody Rainmaster uh, impact sprinkler as well. And so in the 1980 Nelson catalog, you see a combination of of the Moody line and, and the Nelson line, with the Nelson line being more the residential and commercial kind of kind of stuff and and that's what I ended up being involved in installing in, in the late 80s but that's a video uh, that we've already done um, this is not as visually exciting as I thought it might be so in the 80s and 90s Nelson was what I would characterize as a uh, you know uh, fourth place perhaps residential commercial manufacturer of irrigation equipment. They uh, did really well in the hardware store, hose end business. Um, and in the, uh, the very beginning of the 90s, they came out with a three quarter inch gear drive to compete sort of with the PGP that had a really nifty adjustment mechanism to it that was reminiscent of how their old 6700 series rotors um, adjusted. And then uh, in the early 2000s, in sort of this three-way deal, um, the Nelson was sold off in thirds with their, you know, their their um, underground irrigation equipment and control systems going to Signature, um, their hose end stuff going to the German company Bosch, and then at that point in time, they'd gotten into making some fountain equipment, and a company called Henri or Henry uh, bought that, and that was essentially the end of Nelson, though they, Bosch still uses the brand. And I believe they still maintain Nelson's headquarters in Peoria. One of the things that I think is cool as an Iowan uh, about LR Nelson is they had a, uh, a manufacturing facility in Manning, Iowa, which is a little bitty town that you wouldn't necessarily go to unless you really had a great reason. And uh, no offense to anyone from Manning. And uh, so today, what's left of the underground stuff is actually owned by Weathermatic. And uh, you know, you'll, for a while they were selling that gear drive I told you about. Uh, the other thing that is really prominent, um, that is definitely a, a Nelson um, holdover, is their uh, nursery whiz head. And it's uh, a uh, yellow, well back when it was Nelson, they had a yellow frame and a black twirling piece in the middle. And it was just for, you know, putting on a riser and then spinning water out in a nursery. I'll see if I can add a picture of that also. And hopefully by now I've added pictures from the catalogs and you've gotten to see a lot of the history. And uh, I like Nelson as a company. Um, their rep helped me out a lot when I was a young guy. He helped me change jobs at one point very early on in my career and was kind of a booster for me. And I've always been grateful for that. And uh, and I liked the equipment. It was really simple to use and, and worked reasonably well, especially in a residential application. So, uh, you know what? I should have asked my wife what she wants on her hamburger, but you know, they don't, uh, they don't let you ask at McDonald's now, do they? So uh, we're going to go with what I think is best here, and uh, she's pretty reasonable. Hopefully uh, that will all be okay. So for the uh, sprinkler operation portion of this video, we're going to be showing the Nelson Alpha 2, which is their iconic half-inch adjustable part circle uh, impact sprinkler. And uh, I think this is one of the earlier uh, uh, incarnations of it. It has heavier duty trips on it, and the uh, mechanism itself is this pretty chunky bronze. Um, the arm that holds the diffuser pin uh, is definitely reminiscent of earlier um, Western brass uh, equipment. And uh, that, that also leads me to believe that like just about all the Nelson impacts ever made, this one was made by Western brass, even though the lever has a different shape to uh, really support the Nelson logo of the time, which was an oval with the word Nelson in it. And then, uh, the back side here shows the Alpha 2. This is a cap that threads on. It's on pretty tight right now. I can't quite get it off. Under that is just a screw that comes up. So this can also be used as an internal. And in fact, in the higher end of the 6700 series, um, plastic case pop-up impact rotors, 
you'd find an Alpha 2 inside of it. And they, they worked great. And I think you're going to enjoy seeing this guy in operation. So uh, while the missus and I have dinner, why don't you guys watch this sprinkler in operation? Thanks for watching. Thank you. 